Um, the uh, surprising thing, uh, I don't think John saw the game, but we I, we both saw it. Um, is and it it's a theme if you like that runs through the week. Is uh, Juventus losing to Ajax, having gone ahead uh, in their home game? Uh, the gap now between the English clubs and, and most, uh, and particularly with Napoli being by far the second best team in Italy with Carlo Ancelotti, a great coach there, great tradition. Uh, they look miles off it. But if you look right throughout the week, Liam, uh, the English teams, Tottenham, uh, Liverpool, obviously, uh, Manchester City banged there Arsenal banged there Chelsea uh, and Arsenal both in the Europa League semi-final there is a discernible gap opening now between for example the Italian game and maybe the Spanish game as well in the next year or two and the Premier League where the money is yeah well the Premier League generates so much money both uh, domestically and overseas, you know, the clubs are picking up over a hundred million pounds uh, just to begin with. Yes. Uh, just for being in the Premier League. Now, you know, you can be third or fourth. Uh, you could be AC Milan. You could be Inter Milan. You could be Napoli. But you're nowhere near going to get that kind of money. So that that dictates uh, your transfer policy. It dictates who you can buy. Uh, what wages you can spend on players, and this is why this gap has been created, and this is why there's, a, there's a, an organisation called the ECA. It's called uh, it's the European Clubs Association, and I think Karl Heinz Rummenigge is still president. And they're they're trying to push UEFA to to give them a bigger cut of the European monies, just to kind of even things up because it, the gap is is. Is there? It's 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 there for everyone to see, and 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 clubs just can't match the the spending power that the English clubs have in the transfer market, Eamon. So yeah, that's why it's happening. Yeah, uh, John, um, you saw the Ajax Juventus game. I mean, you taped it and watched the whole game afterwards. Again, Juventus. I think they're nearly twenty points ahead of Napoli. Yeah. In the Serie A, they've won it uh, convincingly. They had Ronaldo. They went ahead, but you uh, can confirm, I think, that uh, Ajax were the better team and could have won by more. They, well, they, were, they weren't a better team in the first half, I mean, They came into the second half, played very, very well. I was surprised by the standard of them. Uh, deserved to win it. Could have scored more goals in the second half. They were very, very good. Uh, but again, as Liam said, and you say as well, it's where the money is, I mean, Yeah, we go back, go back to my time when it was uh, Inter Milan buying the, t- the top three Dutch players yes. uh, and anybody else that was available. Now, yeah. it's changed now with the premiership and the money coming into it there. So wherever the money is, yeah. it's where the players go. And the best coaches as well. And the, oh, of course. <laughs> the coaches probably more so than the players, Amy. Yeah. So that's, that's obviously, and Liam has explained it, that's the reason that the Premiership is so uh, superior now yeah. to the other teams. As I say, in Spain, uh, you've got Barcelona and Madrid, who can usually match yes. the finances in the Premier League. Uh, now, whether they do or they don't in the future remains to be seen. But they're, they're out on their own yeah. in relation to all the Italian clubs, indeed. Yeah. And the Spanish clubs in particular. So wherever the money is, and always has been, I mean, yeah. it's where the best players and the best coaches go. And at the moment, that is the Premier League. Yeah, and it's it's worth pointing out, Liam, uh, as you have done, that this is not a level playing field. And Karl Heinz Rummenigge would know that, been a great player, and is someone with a, that thinks about the game. Uh, UEFA do need to level the playing field. But it's very hard to do. We, we know that from looking at the Premier League because the, the big clubs don't want uh, a level playing. They want to retain their dominance. Yeah, absolutely. They want, if, if you're getting the money in, they, want to, they don't want anybody interfering with that. But uh, I think what the clubs are, the, you know, the uh, clubs outside England are pushing for is more uh, financial fair play. Uh, you look at Man City now. I, I, you know, it's just difficult for an Arsenal man to say. But I was delighted Tottenham beat them the other day. Yeah, it must they, be hard. Tottenham, <laughs> so was Tottenham, Eamon. <laughs> uh, but Tottenham didn't pay any. Uh, didn't spend any money in the transfer market, John, in the no, summer. They no, didn't no, have that yeah. money to spend yeah. because of the stadium. Yeah. They had to do it in their own way, 
Whereas Manchester City are being sponsored by the likes of Etihad. But the, the sponsorship money is not realistic. It's not the same sponsorship money that other clubs would get. It's because it's coming from Abu Dhabi and they're giving sponsorship money that far exceeds any money that any club is getting. So yes. they're really getting around financial fair play by doing this, whether it's, uh, whether it's the naming rights on the stadium or... Uh, uh, d- different sponsors across the board at Manchester City they've got so much money coming in uh, and that's why I thought it was great that Tottenham beat them the other night Tottenham didn't have any money to spend in the summer yeah. we thought they were going to fall short for that reason but uh, you know they scraped through um, with a bit of luck because you need a bit of luck but I was delighted because of the amount of money that Manchester City have to spend compared to everybody else. Yeah, and I, I uh, think it's what's happened as, as well, Amy. It's worth pointing out that just that Liam said they didn't spend last summer. Yeah. Uh, one report, according to one report, uh, Pochettino hasn't had any money to spend in the last three windows. Oh, don't, we know we don't that, yeah. Eamon. Yeah, and it's it's it, that, that's Levy's uh, yeah. policy. It's it's paid off for them. But there was a st- time early on the scene. I was, I think you were, maybe Liam was, was criticising Levy for not spending. Yeah, the way I still would. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Potichino's done a great job. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. But in in the big picture, uh, I think it's going to be very very difficult to eliminate the the powers of the big clubs. I mean, yes, because what will happen if they try to do that in a way for yes. Germany or anybody else? They'll break away and start a Super League, yeah. the European Super no, League. There's no. already talks yeah. going on, uh, informal talks between the big clubs in Europe exactly. and the Premier League. Exactly, that's what will happen. I, mean, I know Liam is, is right. It's, there should be a level play, playing field, but when it comes to commerce, I mean, it's very hard to get a level playing field, yeah. particularly if they threaten to do what they did. Don't forget the reason to, for the the the, the uh, Champions uh, League was yes. formed was because the big clubs threatened to break years ago because there was a knockout competition. Yep. And if a big club was knocked out and there was no money, there was no big money in it sure. anyway. So they formed the, the very cleverly yeah. formed the, the league. So there was every team could gar- was guaranteed, the big teams were guaranteed 10 million yeah. whether they were knocked out or not. And, but the, and, so, and the clubs now in Germany, as Liam says, they're protesting against it, trying to get it. But if they do that, in my opinion, the big clubs right. will say, thanks very much, we're off. We're off. 